you have a lot of Panasonic cameras or a lot of new tech cameras and that's all you want to control, you can easily just find a configuration online and apply it to your controller. And the reason why we made it this way is, is because we, first of all, these cameras are very different. So Panasonic cameras, they have their own HTTP based protocol. New tech cameras, they have NDI protocol and Visca protocol. So, and we're using Visca with these. So um, in, in a sense, they are not at all compatible in terms of control, but luckily because we have device cores and configurability in Skyhawk controllers, you can do exactly that. So uh, it just takes some tiptoeing around the technical concepts in our controllers. So we'll be diving into this. Arm yourself with good coffee and get ready for this um, session where I'm basically going to challenge myself to do this on the fly. I did not prepare for this video, so I don't even know if it's going to work. All I hope is that I remember the IP addresses of these cameras correctly. And are they powered? Oh, I applied it in the wrong port, so this is definitely not powered. That one is powered, this one is powered, yes. It's all good! All right, so let's get going. Now, uh, the PTC Fly is, as usual, connected to my laptop with the uh, firmware updater, so I'm just going to go to the online configuration and see what is there. So we can just, from day one, get ready with a uh, device call that includes both Panasonic and Nutec cameras. So I'm going online now. Um, are you ready? Sweet little controller. So it's waiting for the device to boot. It says it can't get identification. It's such a great, great case for a... Oh, just reboot it again. It's because the firmware app is asking the controller about its ID. And for whatever reason, the controller has given up on me. And uh, I don't know. I could also have opened the serial monitor and check. So now I'm just going to do the same. It's booted. It's probably answering. Yes, there we go. So um, you can see for this development model, we have quite a few configurations, which are all the, the, the black ones are local configurations that I'm sure my support staff has been creating to do all kinds of stuff. And these are all the default configurations, quite a lot as well which uh, you will normally pick to work out of the box. Um, oh, there is actually a default configuration for mixing these two kinds of cameras. And uh, you can go and look how clever Bjorn set this up, but um, in my case, I just want to go with something uh, where I can, you know, make a fool out of myself by probably making a lot of mistakes. I'm just selecting the new tech device core, oh, sorry, configuration. And then I'm, uh, sorry, I wanted to add the Panasonic cameras as well. So I'll now be looking for Panasonic in this list. Uh, let me see. Where is it? Panasonic. Oh, that's the serial version. Oh yeah, by the way, for Panasonic cameras, we actually support the serial um, control for pan tilt zoom, which gives you a uh, higher performance, it turns out. That's, for whatever reason, just higher performance, more uh, responsive cameras. Um, so some people need that, but we like to do it all over IP if possible. So I'm just including Panasonic support in the controller, but otherwise I'm keeping NewTek everywhere else. It's all good. It's all good. Yes, um, I will not enable um, the Panasonic cameras yet, but this IP address tends to be correct. And just to get it started in DHCP mode, I'll type in zeros in the IP address. Save settings. Let's update the firmware for this one. I'm sorry about that. Uh, check for updates. And I'll close this down because I hope that we can do the rest in the local web interface. So we are now ready. The controller is booting after the firmware upgrade and it should connect to the new tech camera. So let's just confirm that this is in fact what is happening and then let's look at how the controller works with those cameras. Um, I will bring up the online, uh, sorry, the local configuration just shortly. There we go. Um, so let's get the configuration up. All right, so now we're ready to look into it. First of all, let's con confirm that we can now select between two cameras. And I'm now moving one camera with the joystick. And I am now moving another camera with the joystick. And you know what's funny? Enabling both cameras and move two cameras with the joystick. That's so much fun, but it's so useless. Where it is actually cool is because for the exposure mode, you can now set the exposure mode in, in both cases to, to manual. You could set the iris to the same value. 
uh, 3.2, you could set the shutter speed to whatever is uh, your shutter speed, 150. Your gain settings could be the same. So it's kind of neat that you can pull cameras together like this with the camera selector. And by the way, this gives me a chance to talk about something we did not cover in the uh, uh, video about memories, which is called memory groups. So um, uh, it should have been on the list behind me, so you, you could see it as a, a topic we're going to cover. But it's something that we use all the time for router outputs, for instance, and also cameras. The ability for a camera selector to not only select a single camera, but actually select multiple cameras. So if you look at the camera selector for, let's just pick these two and forget about the stage. We're going to look at that in a moment. You see that for the camera selector, we select camera one into memory AA and camera two into memory AA. So if I select it, oh, I can't even do that. I have only memory groups. So the idea is that whenever you, you press and hold this, if you just press it, you're selecting a camera. But if you press and hold, you're adding a camera to the group. I even think that, um, yeah, so you can also do some modifiers here. So basically, yeah, you add a camera to a group. That's what it does. Okay, so far so good. That was the camera selector for the two new tech cameras. I promised that the main thing about this video would be talking about states and shift levels. So let's look at um, the section up here. The section up here, if we uh, just enable these and enable the states, because you already know what states is, then you'll see that for, for each, because when I'm pressing this four-way button, I'm cycling through the four states, and that, of course, is reflected by showing different actions on these buttons, as you can see here. So the simplicity of it is that we only have one shift level, really. So we use states, the columns, and the number of actions, and it creates a nice grid where you could you know, print it out and you have a good overview of what actions are assigned to which knobs in, in which state. Um, so far, so good. The, the thing is that for these two sections, I've done something special. Um, oh, wait, no, maybe that's not the case. Actually, let's look at what the four-way button here does. And in this case, I'm going to remove the states as well, so we don't need to bother about it. <sighs> there are a lot of actions assigned to this little button. Let's look at what it does. First of all, I choose the color. The next thing I do is I am transforming the four-way behavior of this button so it's only passing the down press. So what happens when I press the lower edge of this button is that it's changing a state to state number one. It's toggling that state, but it's doing it for register P. Remember that this is new because previously what we have only done is just changing state, but now I'm changing it for register P, whatever that means. Okay, then it has an image. That's probably the image you see in the display right now. So that's all good. It's uploaded with the Manage Media tab in the course online server, as you have seen in previous video. The next thing that happens is that I'm transforming four-way behavior again. So I'm blocking the up down, down direction. So now we have only the sides left and right back. Then I force this to be a HVC type pulsed. And I'm then using the shift level uh, yeah, the shift level action, and then I chose level 3. What does that mean? It means that as I'm pressing the sides of this button, I am cycling. Let me just do, show you, because you can see it on the controller. So as I'm pressing the side of the button, I am cycling through some options. Actually, there is a bug here, because the thing is, you can see that it's, it's now changing the preset bank from 1 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15. But then I press it again, and now it shows 1 to 5, so it sounds like right. But in fact, what I just did was to select Shift Level 3, and since nothing is assigned to Shift Level 3 for these preset buttons, it is just showing me the normal state, uh, sorry, the normal Shift Level, and then I'm pressing again, and now I'm back to normal. So in fact, what I should have done is to change this to 2, so I am now cycling up to 2. Let me just check. There you see it's now performing exactly as it should. You know what happens if I change it to 1? It is becoming just like a regular shift key. It means as I'm pressing this, it's just kind of toggling forth and back. So what does shift level really mean? Previously, and the, 
what we talked about shift level was we had like a, a hold down button that would change the bus row of keys working with an ATEM switcher. Then we release it again and it falls back to the normal. But why stop there? Why not have multiple shift levels? Of course, for a toggle key, for a hold down key, only one level makes sense. But what if you could have level two, three, four, five, and so forth? Then you could actually have a whole range of shift levels. And that's exactly what we did for these preset selection buttons. So what you wonder is, how is this actually programmed into the system? Well, we have seen that the four-way button used to change the shift level well, now, if I select level 2 here, go all the way up to 2, so 0, 1, 2, 2, 1, 0, however direction I press it. Um, and uh, just allow me, yeah, okay, so I'm just saving this, so we are back to this state, and then we go to the camera selector, and we look at how these, um, how, how this must work for, for the camera selector. So, it turns out that um, I need... Do I need to get into the state? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, it's like I wanted to complete that button because uh, I probably should. Okay, let me just complete this button. So just keep this in mind. Shift level one up to two on the sides of this button. And it seems to work for presets, but it doesn't do any difference for the camera selector, but it could. Now, um, we need to, to finish this button up and look at transforming four-way behavior. In this case, we are passing only the up press. And when I'm passing the up press, um, I am also forcing the HVC type to become binary. And then I am using the state up to state number three. It's cycling up, so it means then I have repeated presses on this one. It is cycling, in this case, the regular state. Notice that before we had register P, and now we have nothing. So when I press the upside, I am cycling through four states of the controller, and you see that up there. That's natural. When I'm pressing the lower edge, this is what we did up here, I am toggling state 0 or 1 for register P. And for some magical reason, that doesn't affect this up here, but this down here, because, and now comes the advanced thing, the state register I'm changing here is not the global state, which is used up here, but it's a local state register that is used only for this section. And I'll show you. So um, that explains this change. And then when I go to these buttons, uh, for, yeah, well, for this section, sorry, 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 sorry. So for section one, you can see if I choose section one, I have added a system action called local state register. I have chosen register P. Then it also turns out I've used a local color, but that's not important right now. The important thing is that for this section, it is going to use a different uh, state register than otherwise globally enabled for the controller and used for the upper keys. And that is the register P that we were changing with this button. And the reason why, when you look at these four buttons, and enable state number one, then you see on the one column you have the camera selector, on the other column you have the preset selection. And now we come back to the shift states because here you can see that I defined a, an action in the normal case, one action for the uh, shift level one, and I defined another action for shift level two. And that's true for all four buttons as you can see from this, okay? So, um, you actually can also have local shift levels and, well, mm, let's see if we are going to handle, look at that later. I think I want to move on now and try to uh, clear this out, doing something uh, entirely from scratch with the new tech device core. So, let's just go online and create a new user configuration. Creating a new one, sorry, that. I'm adding devices, new tech, PDC. I'm adding another one, Panasonic, and finding the Panasonic PDC device core. Save settings, controller configuration. Um, let's set up some IP addresses. 
let's make sure it's DHCP here. Set this one, 10. I think this is this is it. Save settings and update. So we are now finishing up the firmware upgrade. We have a completely blank device core. It has no actions assigned to anything, but it's trying to talk with Panasonic and NewTek cameras. I think it may do that as it's booting. So uh, we could uh, just take a look at the serial monitor. I know it will be flooded with messages shortly, so or it may be flooded with messages. It seems it may not because maybe this is triggered by actually having a um, camera selector on the controller. So we go to local configuration to uh, make sure that we can now begin and control this. So um, sometimes you need to press it twice. That is because it's like a toggle option that toggles on and off and Okay, so the first thing I want to do, we just looked at how states were used in the default case for the live, uh, for the PDC fly. And in this case, I want to use states to change between the two brands, because I think that's the way we should approach this. So I will go to the uh, state um, definition here, and then I will type in new tech for state number one, and the second one, Panasonic save. And then the thing is that for the camera selector where camera 1 and 2 will be the new tech cameras and 3 and 4 will be the Panasonic cameras, I will now select uh, these four buttons like that and then I'll say that no matter what we are going to select state number 0 with this button. I'm doing the same here and then I'm copying it down here and saying I'm selecting state number 1 whenever we do work with the Panasonic cameras. Then on the joystick, um, for the joystick I'm going to define these actions. So the left-right action for the new tech it, uh, camera it's gonna be a uh, pan and here I should definitely select memory AA for the camera. Um, I can insert that down here for the uh, up-down state. Uh, let me see it's gonna be tilt and then it is being zoom, and for the top button we should do the uh, pan tilt for the binary with the home button. Yes, okay, save, or oh, not save yet, but because then for the Panasonic state we will um, do Panasonic pan. It's again we are using memory A, and I'm inserting tilt, and now I'm inserting, uh, sorry, rotation uh, zoom, and finally the homing feature. So we have it right there, home, on this. Now, uh, notice that I use memory A as my camera selector. So um, I've now programmed the joystick to talk to either the one or the other set, depending on which state is chosen. You can see I can change between the states and these buttons, but I also need the camera selection to happen. So I'm, I'm going to revisit these buttons configuration and then also set up uh, a camera selector. So um, camera select select camera A for memory AA and then camera select for the new tech select camera number two for memory A. I do think that I should probably put this on top and then let's just save and see what happens. Uh, what I wanted to see really was that I'm changing okay that is working so now I'm camera one camera two and I need to do the same for the Panasonic cameras as well so um, selecting this one, uh, let me see, yes, for the Panasonic camera we need to have uh, camera one in memory AA, I'm probably going to move that up there, uh, sorry, I need this one and I shouldn't have that action I just made, I will add it for this one as well, Panasonic camera select but camera 2 into memory AA and put it on top. Let me just check camera 1, camera 2, system state there. Uh, for this one, camera 2, camera 1. Yeah, it should all be good. So let's see if this is really working. So now you can see it's blinking because it's trying to connect to these cameras and so on. <sighs> the worst thing about this is that now the camera selector is really working with the same memory in the system. So maybe this is why it 
it will look like if it is... It, hmm, I may need to use state to compensate. I have two options now for that. But on the other hand, I want this to be active no matter what. So it's sort of tricky. Maybe I should have a flag action to manage that. But let's focus on, now I've selected camera one, a new tech camera. And I'm obviously controlling camera one from new tech. So I go to camera two from new tech and that's good. I can go to the camera three, camera three for Panasonic. There we go. And the last Panasonic camera right there with the joystick using states. Now, maybe we want to use flags to control the highlighting the buttons. I think that might be a good idea. Okay, guys, um, I had to go through some trial and error here to get a proper camera selector and it ended a place where I went through using flags to feedback the colors on the buttons and I couldn't really tell why that was. I would have to go and ask my own support staff because sometimes you, uh, there's something you don't know. I should have looked into a manual or something like that. But finally, I have something where when I press camera number one, two, three, and four, I'm actually selecting each of these cameras. It is still based on having two states, one state to handle new tech and another state to handle the Panasonic cameras. So if you want to look at how I finally did it, I have the state selector there and then the new tech camera selector. So it is as where I left the state selector here and the new tech camera selector. That's also good. But notice that the state selector here is now changing to this state, but then it is selecting camera three and camera four. So the trick I had to do, because it was kind of problematic that both this and this camera was camera one and this and this camera was camera two in the system, I had to assign camera three and four to these two, meaning that the starting IP address that I chose would have to be 245 instead of 247, which is the first of these two cameras being in a consecutive range. In a sense, it makes sense. It's, I mean, you can understand why camera three and four would then have to do this, but it just feels a little bit like a workaround, and it is a workaround. So these are things that we are still improving because we are really in a fringe case where we are trying to do something slightly funky here, combining these two, but still maintaining a lot of the individual control that we are aiming for. And let's get on to that, because now um, we have those two states, and um, I want the sections up here to reflect those states, obviously. So can we do that? Let's see. So for encoder A, in this case, we want it uh, for, for new tech. Let me see. New tech. In the new tech uh, case, then we'll use exposure mode. In the Panasonic case, we will use... Um, do, do we have an exposure mode? I'm not really sure we have exactly that for the Panasonic camera. Let's choose Iris then. Let's make this Iris as well. Well, we do need an exposure mode though, because we need to change to it. So maybe we just put in a blank setting. It could be no action. So then on the next one, we'll assign Iris to the new tech camera. And for Panasonic camera, we'll also assign Iris. On the new tech camera, we could now assign gain. And on the Panasonic camera, we could assign, let me see, um, do we have a gain? Uh, sensor gain as well. Okay, so it's good. Um, what else do we have? White balance stuff. Um, on the uh, Well, on the last one, what do we want to put here? Um, exposure compensation, compensation maybe. Uh, exposure compensation on the Panasonic. Do we have it? Something like that. I am not sure. Uh, it does say shutter mode. Is that something we want to try? Okay, so maybe we use shutter mode instead. Uh, it's not going to be the same as shutter on this one. I'm pretty sure about that. One thing we just forgot is to make sure we use memory A in all these cases for the camera selection. So. Otherwise, it's just talking to camera one, and that's no good. We want memory A to decide the parameters, destination. There we go, safe. Okay, so uh, we can see now that we do have access to iris and sensor gain, and for whatever reason, not shutter speed on this Panasonic camera. The same is true when I go here. You can see the value is changing, and I'm apparently able to change it too. So even though we don't have 
a picture where we can validate it, it is obviously changing. As I'm going to now camera one and two, you see that that's the new tech camera. I could change the exposure mode for one of them. And when I go here, you can see that it's obviously different. Again, I'm, I should be able to group them actually. Yes. So I can now select uh, the same value for multiple cameras, meaning, I, I mean, did I show this in the beginning of the video? I think I did. So that's kind of neat that you can still do that, at least for the two new tech cameras together. It wouldn't make sense to add a Panasonic camera to the group because obviously it's not going to send um, parameters over to the new tech cameras in this scenario. But it's working, as we can see. The only thing that I'm concerned about now is I also wanted to have multiple levels in the menu. And if you remember from the beginning of the video, the way we obtained multiple levels in the menu or multiple pages was by using states in the controller. But we have now used the states already to choose between the brand of camera we're working with. So we are left with shift levels. Therefore, we are now going to add multiple things by adding a shift key here. So let's just do that. And this shift key would be, let's go to two levels, yes. Um, let's make it cycle up and save. So let's see on button six, you can see I'm pressing it repeatedly so it's cycling. You know that this is a four-way button, so you can assign the sides left and right to do up and down if you want that. But in this case, we're just cycling, all right? So since the shift level is not used anywhere, it doesn't affect what happens on these knobs, but we are going to change that right now. So I'm now re-enabling these buttons, and then for the new tech, I will add more actions. So as I'm now on shift level one, what do I want to do? Typically stuff like white balance. So I'm choosing the white balance mode. Then on shift level two, what am I going to do? I am going to see... Um, Tone adjustments. Uh, we have brightness, contrast, saturation. Sounds great. Oh, remember, memory A for the camera. Memory A for the camera, yes. And for shift level two here, I am now in the white balance. On, on shift level one, this is all about white balance. So I'll have white balance push for camera in memory AA. For the next one, I think I want to have white balance for memory AA. Um, well, just wait a second. R and B gain, right? Red gain, yes. And on the next, oh, sorry, I need to make sure that we have shift here. That's super important. And I remembered it up there. So shift, 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 select it. And down here for the white balance, white balance, white balance. Uh, let me see. I'm losing my mind now. Uh, blue, blue and memory AA. Okay, good. I think this is fine. So I want to add the second shift level as well. Um, on the second shift level, I was starting by tone adjustments. So in this case, it's going to be contrast, and I'm choosing memory AA. And there, shift level, contrast, tone adjustment, contrast, saturation in this case, memory A. And for the last one, uh, let's not specify anything. So we are dropping the same. Let's save. Let's save. See what happens. Okay. So uh, we go to shift level zero. That's off. Go to camera number one. And now as I'm pressing this, you should see that it's changing to white balance. I can change the white balance to something. If I go to manual, one push, then I get the one push trigger option. And if I go to manual, I can adjust the uh, red and blue gain for the camera. Awesome. So what happens when I press the second time? Let's go there. I see brightness, contrast, saturation. Yes, success. Although on the last one, I see the shutter speed. And you may know why, because it's always falling back to the default if we do not specify anything. And it turns out for the last one, we did not specify anything for shift level two. So in order to blank this out, we would need to insert a no action right there. And when we update, you'll see, yes, it's now blanking out. So what about setting some colors? We want some colors for our different shift levels. And we can do that quite cleverly by simply using the sections up here. So for the sections, um, we could, for the new tech camera, insert some uh, coloring. Let's say that we want a rose there. Then for the next shift level, we want another local color let's make it blue and for the next one I'm totally randomizing those colors 
Um, this should be shift, by the way, and then spring. All right. So let's just see, apply it and see what happens now. Okay. Uh, so I'm cycling through rose, blue, rose, blue, and shift. The reason why this is not lighting up is because it's not active, but it should be in just a moment right there. Yes, thank you. Okay, so that works. Now I just need to copy that to section three. So I just wanted to check, and then now we do copy. Let me see, insert right there, save, and now we have it applied across as well. Okay. So we could have the same coloring going on for the Panasonic. In fact, that's going to be the default. So if we look at the actions for the Panasonic uh, state of things, then uh, in here we would also have to uh, assign actions for shift level one for the Panasonic camera. And um, so it's kind of interesting because we could now have different levels for this menu. That would be an interesting thing. So we put pedestal for camera in memory AA, uh, that one, and then I am adding a shift level to put, uh, where did we have pedestal down here, right there for camera in memory AA, the blue one, and I just want to move on now, I, because it's going to be a lot, I need to blank this out, since I don't want anything there, in those cases, and this should be shift, so okay. Now I have two shift levels for Panasonic. Save. Okay, so we now go to a Panasonic camera and you see shift level one, we have pedestal R, B, blanked out, that's great. When I go to the second shift level, notice that it now goes back to the first one, which is not really what we wanted, right? Because we thought that um, it was more clever if, um, yeah, uh, because, you know, this is like what I showed you in the very beginning where the controller was actually configured with a little bug that it went all the way to shift level 3, although it had only presets for shift level 1, or 0, 1, and 2. So in this case, when we are in the Panasonic mode, maybe we want this button to only cycle up to 1. And that's kind of easy to do as well, because we just now say that we copy this one over here, and then we insert it here so and set it to, to 1, so sh save. And as you can see, as I'm now pressing this one, it's just toggling on and off shift. It's calling it on and off, because it's a binary state at this point, but that's what it's, it's going to do. And uh, if we go back to new tech, then it's going to cycle through three different levels for those. Okay, guys, so what you have seen now is um, using states to change between these cameras and then also being able to have um, multiple shift levels. We have been looking at that since I might want to use shift levels to access presets down here. Um, then we want to... Um, is that what I'm going to do? Yes, it's probably what I'm going to do. Um, I will, let's, let me see, I will now use a different shift register for those keys in the bottom here, so, or I can, uh, well, okay, I'm just trying to make up my mind on the fly, which is dangerous, obviously, and uh, what I will do is to, um, to show you here that we can recall presets, ah, oh, this is going to be tricky, isn't it? It is going to be kind of tricky. That's interesting. Now, um, yes, I'm going to introduce a shift level to recall presets. So for camera and memory AA, I'm recalling preset number one. But this has to happen on a new shift level. Okay. And then... I'm going to do the same here. Preset 2. Preset for camera in memory AA3. Preset 4. And in fact, um, do I want the last button? No, I'm just going to use that button to select my... Um, yeah. This button then... No, wait a second, wait a second. Okay, we're good. Now, 
notice that as I'm in shift level one and two, then in shift level one, I'm now having access to presets down here. I can recall presets on my cameras. So what camera am I on? I'm on camera number one, and I'm recalling preset one, preset two, preset three, and preset four. So that works. The only thing is that it doesn't make sense that this is sh changing the shift level to access presets here while it's also changing the menu up here. And now we're using shift registers. So what am I going to do? I'm basically saying in section number one, I want to use a diff different shift register, just like we had a, s a state register differently set. So I'm, I'm making a local shift register called A, and then I want to have a second. Uh, first of all, when I'm now saving this, you will see that as I'm pressing this button, it does not affect the camera selector. So that's the, the first important thing. Then if I assign this button to be a, a shift setting button to level one for, let's say, as long as I hold down, could be fine. And I can now assign it to shift uh, to re register A. Let's just save it as it is right now without selecting register A. You'll see that, in fact, what happens when I'm, I'm pressing this button to enable shift on off is that I'm really manipulating the default shift level that affects everything. And that's exactly not what I wanted, so I'm now using register A and save that, meaning that now when I'm doing this, is it saved? It is working. Mm. Okay, so something happened there. I'm just going to refresh my browser then. And um, I will need to change this again. Save. And there we go. Okay. So notice that now I'm changing register A. This section is what is uh, affected, and this one is affecting the upper section right there. I think this concludes my video with advanced GUROW stuff for the controllers. You can see how you can really go deep and complex with these things, having multiple shift registers to actually have different uh, you know, shifts, different places on the controller. Likewise, you can use states in different ways, um, but it can become quite complex. And, uh, but you can do a lot with it, although that you quickly end up with a lot of playing with the controller and so on. You are always welcome to ask questions to our support line, also to suggest help topics because we made these videos to educate you better and there are still lots of details that we could communicate to you. So please get in touch with us if you have ideas of how we can um, improve our learning materials to make you an even more cool guru in the Skahoi universe. <laughs>